really get clarity on like what you want your business to be. Because you can either own the business or it can own you. If you're just chasing the dollar, if you're just chasing transactions, if you're just chasing growth. Welcome to the High Voltage Business Builders, a show where we interview people committed to making their next million through passive income using real estate, brokering, e-commerce, and beyond. If you're a passionate business builder yourself, visit VoltageB2B.com to get in touch now. All right, Dan, welcome to the call. It's good to have you here. Same here, Neil. Thank you. All right. So we were just jamming on your history. Let's Let's get into that in just a minute. But first off, let's tell people maybe what you're doing and why they should be listening to the next 20 minutes of your uh, superior intellect and knowledge and why they want to focus on what you're doing. Well, first, I would say don't believe a word I say <laughs> How about that. Liar, liar. Uh, because the only thing I can share from and teach from is my own personal experience at the end of the day. Right. And uh, you know, there's not such thing as a one size fits all model. That's true. In my opinion. Super true. Uh, you know, there are nuances, there are distinctions and different things like that. What I would say is if you're struggling to grow your business and get clients daily, then try what I'll share with you and see how it works for you. Give it like 90 days, see how it works for you. And then report back and let us know how it may have worked. And in most cases today, Neil, we see, uh, you know, I have a lot of fun helping companies grow and scale and, you know, do all some sorts of fun stuff. You know? Yeah, you're very good into the direct response component. We're going to talk about that today into the direct marketing and consumer aggregation, of course, um, finding the right fit for the right client. I know that's a big thing we talked about in the yeah. past. Uh, and of course, pivoting in business, which is a big component of obviously having successful measure in business that we've all experienced. It's the one commonality across all entrepreneurs. They never started one thing and became successful. They started 10 things. And then one of those things became successful after the eight things didn't kill them, right? That's right. Um, so let's talk in depth a little bit more about some of these things. Talk about what it means to be a you know direct response marketer for you. Yeah, so uh, our framework, so direct response marketing, I actually feel is outdated. Uh, traditional marketing is outdated. And so direct response marketing is, you know, the short version of this is putting out a marketing message that you can easily measure to know what kind of a result you got from it. So it's results-based, essentially. Yeah, it's what we call deep funnel linking or deep, deep marketing. Um, which again, in direct response, the concept is one or two touch points or up to seven point touch points that occur. Um, in my experience and where I know you're going with this combo is why I like that. And I wanted to hook that out there so people can get into it is, you know, what does it take for somebody to touch me? However many times it takes them to touch me and whatever time frame that takes over a maybe even two, three month period, uh, so that my long-term relationship with them becomes a more valuable resource than how many clients I have, but how well I serve and how deep I go with each of my clients. Is that a fair assessment? Yes, absolutely. In fact, you know, our version of this, we call it direct response branding, right? For the small business under $25 million a year, Neil, you know, like we've talked about is most companies that are like leading with branding, you know, because there's certain experts that are still out there teaching, which is just dry, drives me crazy as they're going you know, to build your business, you should post like 50 to 60 times a day, which is utter crap for most small business owners and CEOs and founders and or their teams that are being trained to do this sort of thing, right? It's the emergence of these two connections together, direct response, branding gives you the greatest impact, the greatest result, the greatest outcome to, you know, give you a best chance to grow in exponentially. It actually pulls the value closer into the times that you actually do engage with them as opposed to what I call the white noise of marketing, which is that how many times did I post a day and how much content can I push out there? Nothing against Gary Vee and that whole thing, but I really think that that's kind of messed with people a little bit. Um, and it sounds to me like you've also had that same experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I have a lot of stats on the clients we work with, probably like you too, right? And I'm, we're big on data, data-driven decision-making. And so many times, People have kind of bought into a version of that posting all these times and then go, how many clients did you get from that? And they go, zero. How long have you been doing that? Oh, I've been doing that for five years. Five years. Why and now, did you keep doing it? <laughs> As somebody the other day, he was like, I shut my podcast down finally. And I'm like, well, how long have you been doing it? Well, like three years. And I'm like, well, what, well, what did it do for you? Like, why are you know, if, and, and they really couldn't quantify it. 
uh, mm. other than they could quantify the negative response at the time in which they took right. to do it. Right. Yep. Um, yep. So obviously you're into breaking through these barriers. What are some of the things you would suggest maybe for people uh, that, you know, are your own historical and experience as you talk a little bit more about yourself uh, that you've learned to overcome in your own business? Cause you've had some great successes and I want to focus on some of those. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, first of all, I've learned mostly, you know, from like many people from failure. Right. So, so I got started with my first business officially in the late 1980s, but I'll call them a first company that was a seven figure business in 1992. And we were fortunate to build that to seven figures in just a couple of months. I was 22 year old kid and uh, like hit it. But what I learned is I wasn't good at running a business. We were good at marketing. We were good at selling. We were good at helping our clients do marketing. And we, I wasn't good at running a business. And so I had to go through a few failures, like, you know, bur bankruptcy and, you know, some stuff that got in the way, got the dirty T-shirt to prove it. Uh, that ultimately got me to a place where since then we've, I've had multiple seven and eight figure companies had grown a, a big coaching business to over 25 million a year. And then I had a publishing business where we were generating over 2000 new clients a week and over 10,000 subscribers a day, uh, and leads a day, which, you know, was a lot of fun. We learned from that media. And now, you know, we get to help clients install systems, right? And so if I had to say a couple of things that have been valuable in learning is number one, is you know really get clarity on like what you want your business to be cuz you can either own the business or it can own you if you're just chasing the dollar if you're just chasing transactions if you're just chasing growth right so i'd encourage you to look at getting clarity on like what do you really want your business to be in other words what's your vision of it and then how you know like for me big mistake i made in the early days i just you know I, I have a type A personality, Neil, and I can run at 105 miles an hour and will. And I did literally almost, it put me in a hospital for four days where I needed a heart procedure. Oh, you wow. Know, 17 years ago. I don't even know if I shared that. Oh, yeah, you, I didn't know that, huh? It was a huge wake up call. And I, at the time, I was running this big company, this yeah. you know, 175 employees, three offices that we had grown from like a den with a volunteer, which is just crazy to think about. Yeah. And then I was able to, you know, because of that experience, it was one of the main reasons that I decided to sell hmm. for my own personal health. But then I really had a coach who said, Dan, what do you really want? And I realized what I wanted was more freedom. And I had built this kind of box around my business. And so selling was one option and it was a good option and very grateful that I had that ability, of course, to do that. And today, you know, not only do I spend a lot of time with my wife. Uh, I also get a chance to spend a lot, not just quality time, but quantity time with my kids. They're now 16 and 14. I've basically been around every day to help see them and work with them and grow up, grow up uh, in all their activities uh, for many years, you know, close to a decade. And on top of that, in running our business, I also coach high school football. And I've done that for the last five because I love building young men. And there's a lot of 14, 18 year old young men that you know, in a lot of ways, I feel men or boys have been demasculated. And so to give them an, you know, accessibility to leadership and, you know, success traits that it's more for me off the field stuff, Neil, than yeah. on the field. No, it's a powerful, it's a powerful what you do. And, and built all these little mini call it platforms for, you know, helping people re reach their potential either in the business or otherwise. Yeah, yeah dude, I, I love that. And you kind of remind me, I mean, I, you're, you, you jokingly said your age, and I'm not going to say, but there was a meme you said a minute ago that reminded me of you. And it's like, there's the 80 year old guy who's like, Hey, I'm, I've been online for years and I'm only 30. Uh, but he looks <laughs> like he's, he's 80. People would not recognize that you're only like 30 years old. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, a, you're a good guy, but your history and your family, and I appreciate the lifestyle by design phrase came into my mind when I was listening yeah. to you talk. And it's yeah. something that you actually, uh, you actually applied through the experience and some of your mistakes. And, and hopefully somebody listening to this will they will, will avoid that because I did the same thing as we were talking, right? Um, I grew and had the business and got involved in the companies and leveraged myself too hard into it and then went bankrupt and went through all that nonsense and had to reinvent myself. Um, quite honestly, you and others who are some of the most successful people I know uh, have all had major failures that everyone else is still afraid of. Um, right. And while we not want you to go through that, that wasn't really the point. Maybe you could avoid it, but you can't avoid all mistakes. And, uh, you know, all mistakes are going to make you into something different. You shouldn't avoid all mistakes. And I think that's part of, you know, what I'm taking away from what you said. 
so in terms of response, in terms of this year, in terms of things you're doing um, to continue to propagate that message, what is your biggest focus point? Obviously, coaching Little League football for men and boys to become great men, which is like probably the most critical and, and wonderful thing I think you could be doing <laughs> outside of business. Uh, what else are you focused on? Well, you know, being a husband, being present with my wife and us being best friends and just celebrating life because every day is a gift. And, uh, you know, get to I think we all get to realize that more and more over these last couple of years. Uh, being a dad for my kids and then from the business point of view is uh, really working with great clients, you know, with these strategies to help companies get a sales and marketing system in place to help them grow with less stress and to get free from the day to day because like when you have the right sales and marketing system in place, many times it can be that dream come true solution if you do it by design. So th those are that's one part of the business. Uh, separately, this will maybe be really kind of funny to a degree, but I'm writing a new book called uh, Direct Response Branding. So this is literally me handwriting it. So I record a video. So this, by the way, if you want to write a book, here's a couple of simple tips of how a version I do, which is I... Uh, record a video of the concepts and I transcribe it. And then I take that transcription and I start free flow writing with that combination. And literally this, I'll have the book done in less than 60 days uh, as far as the first draft. Which that sounds like another done. program ready to go. Dan, thank you. Thank you. So that, uh, that's that's a, another big thing. And then, um, you know, co coach our high school football, believe it or not, even though fall is the season for high school football, literally I start Monday with our, call it preseason camps and training and different things like that. Well, dude, yeah. you are a busy guy. <laughs> Having fun, right? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, here's something else. Yeah, what's up? Um, yeah, I got a little fluffy, truth be told. This is a damaging confession. But, you know, you know, if you're a type A driver, creator, visionary type, uh, maybe you can relate to this a little bit where sometimes – your health might take a back seat and, uh, you know, damaging confession. Mine did last quarter uh, of last year. So I got a little fluffy, I, I, I call it. And uh, my wife says the same phrase. <laughs> yeah. And so, I've never heard anybody uh, else use that just by the way. Yeah, and so one, one day, like between the 25th and the first of the year, I looked in the mirror and I was like, Oh my God, that looks like melted ice cream. And I melted was like, ice cream. Oh, no. terrible. Like melted ice cream. Just, <laughs> oh my God. So I had had enough, right? And Tony Robbins has always taught, you know, if you're, uh, it's got to be a must, not just a should, yes. right? So for me, seeing a melted ice cream on my body everywhere, I was like, I got to do something about this. So, but I, I needed to find some because I've had a knee issue for quite a few years now um, after tearing a PCL and severely sprained an MCL and an ACL. Oh, ouch. Coaching on the sideline, which is crazy to think about. Um, so I, you know, gotten this, a little bit fluffy. So mm -hmm. I talked to a friend of mine, Jason, and said, Hey, I noticed you got in some really great shape. And he said, Well, let me hook you up with my guy, JT. And uh, what I love about the program he put me on uh, is he said, Neil, look, Dan, stop doing everything you're doing. And I don't want you doing weights up front. We'll get to it. But initially, all I want you to do is walk. I'm like, Are you sure? Like, you want me to just walk? He goes, yes, I want you to walk for about 45 minutes to an hour a day. Can you do that? I'm like, that sounds like too good to be true. Yeah, I can do that. And then on top of that, you know, he set me up with the nutrition. I said, but it can't be extreme, like, because it needs to be something that's a lifestyle, right? So long and the short, no extreme diet, no extreme exercise, and 45 minutes to an hour a day. I am approximately just short of 60 days into the program. I've let go of shed uh over 30 pounds as of today right which i feel feel great and you know, this is a weight i was in high school my sophomore year which you know feels really great and it's just you know the pressure off my body you know my heart's I, you know strong all those sorts so that's another thing is the the fitness for life and especially being i'm 52 i'll be 53 uh, in a couple months oh well, well we're um, not sharing age on here come on now oh that's right that's right uh but fit for life right yeah, is absolutely you know, just what what i think great you know, how can you be great in your business like if our fitness isn't there or our home life is a wreck so if our body's a wreck or our home life's a wreck i think ultimately it will catch up in the business so you know what i love about you neil what i love about what you represent what you stand for is front stage 
and backstage connect, right? You can have the best of it all. You can, and meaning you can have a great at home life, great fitness, and a great business. You don't have to give up one, despite what a lot of experts may have led you or I to believe. You can have it all. So, anyway. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say that. Yeah, it's a balance of life and eating. It's a huge thing. And I still have 20 to get off myself. And and I had, I don't even to- told you this, but when I was 19, I blew out my ACL. I was actually going to do a pickup game, went, uh, going to go red letter because I, was I wasn't on the team. And I get an intramural game of football and boom, blew out the ACL. And that was the end of it. So those are extremely painful and they're hard to come back from. So kudos for you uh, getting out there and getting back from that because that's a challenge. I've been there. Uh, yeah, as I look back, I probably should have done the surgery, uh, but I told I you did the full doctor, surgery. Right? Yeah, I didn't it, want to do it. I'll end up having to do the other one at some point. It still bothers me. It's my it's my old creaky man knee that I like to joke about. You know, <laughs> oh, the weather's yeah. changing. It's like, oh, the knee is getting achy. Yes. Um, but yeah, everybody has different ways of doing that walking or whatever. And we live in the country. So a lot of my stuff out here is physical labor. Um, I jokingly say I don't need to go to a CrossFit in a gym because yeah. I can do tractor tires and tires out here and I can, you know, do logs and, and do all kinds of stuff and chainsaw for hours. <laughs> I'm <laughs> picturing Rocky in the snow, walking through with logs and doing the workout. It's got bottom. back from the snow because we got almost <laughs> an inch of ice out here and we're having to get water for the animals and take care of things and go out, even though it's like 12 degrees and a negative wind chill, you still got to get out there and take care of the animals. But I designed this life and I love that. And other people might hate it, but we we love the way we live our lifestyle. And it's such a big, important factor in mindset it really is when you get to where you love, because if like you just said very succinctly, if the mind is not right, then the food will take you and then the body takes you and then the business will eventually go. And they're all interconnected. I mean, you said that right. very well uh, and you're doing very wonderful things with those. So tell me a little bit more about Breakthrough. Yeah, so uh, Breakthrough 3X, uh, you know, been very fortunate. We've been running, it's a boutique business. Essentially, we work with clients, Neil, where we're kind of like a a virtual fractional CMO and team to implement, right? So we go beyond traditional consulting. We go beyond traditional coaching. We go beyond traditional agencies to basically walk into a business and become a strategic growth partner as a fractional CMO and team, right? to help them grow and scale their business. We're performance-based, so the better our clients do, the better we do, right? And, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun. Our like highest value client uh, to this point has been paid us about a million dollars as a business because we helped them grow by over 10 million, which, you know, if you do the math, that's free to a client, which we feel we should be free to a client. So, uh, you know, we incorporate a lot of things with our team where, you know, if someone needs services done, like, you know, because, you know, for example, a lot of people struggle with an offer, right? So I've built most of the things in our business almost like a franchise system that not only we use and I've used for decades running our business and growing them, but also when we work with clients, we're basically building it on tools and systems so people can then run those systems, right? Kind of evolved out of my work initially way back when with uh, the E-Myth and Michael Gerber, right? We just happen to focus mostly on marketing systems and selling systems, right? So it can you know, go beyond the owner, go beyond the founder or visionary creator. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. So if someone needs, you know, help with, you know, creating their model or their funnels or their offers or copywriting or tech issues or SEO, we've got a team that can go just get all that stuff done and done fractionally, right? At a fraction of what they would pay all these different team members to do it. So, and guys, I know Dan, I know you're serious because I mean, obviously I know your business and I know who you are and I know who you're connected to. And I have actually one of your clients who's coming on in about two or three shows from here and an episode oh, amazing. Uh, to, to talk here as a high voltage business builder who reached that pinnacle in business because of what you guys did for him uh, and his team. So I'm excited to have him come on here and chat about it. And so anybody listening to this today, if you're interested in connecting with Dan, uh, go check out Breakthrough, go they look him up. What's the best way? Do they just want to Google you, go to LinkedIn, Facebook? Yeah, I mean, if you want to Google, my name's a little tough to spell, but go to Breakthrough3x.com. Uh, real simple. You can learn more about what we're doing, how we're doing it, some of the clients we've worked with, our case studies. Uh, if you want to get, you know, kind of a taste of what we're up to, we put together for the show a special small business toolkit uh, that includes a handful of tools. Number one, um, I built a tool for me originally 20 some years ago called the CEO checklist because I'm not a trained CEO at school. It was trained by running businesses, growing companies, et cetera. 
school of hard knocks. So like literally up on our wall, I've got my CEO checklist that I use to keep me on track yearly, quarterly, monthly, and annually, or, or weekly and daily. And broken down, we're just with check marks. It just keeps me on track to handle the things that is a CEO we can cover. So we're going to give you give you that CEO checklist. In addition, uh, we have a hiring checklist. And basically how we look at hiring is build a marketing system for hiring because who wants to waste hours and hours with unqualified prospects or candidates? And there's a much more effective way. So we can show you, we have an eight-step blueprint that shows you how to build essentially your version of a hiring marketing model uh, to hire right the first time, all the time. Uh, the next tool is something called casual conversations that lead to conversions, right? Uh, this was a tool that in uh, one, of, one of our companies, the coaching business, where we turn literally customer service people, Neil, into high performers. And lots of people said it couldn't be done, couldn't be done because it's a different skill. And it is a different skill set. But what we were able to do with this 12-step checklist is train our team on how to use the 12-step checklist to become high performers. So we're going to give you that checklist and outline that you can model, use, and implement. You know, For some people, we've had people tell us that's been worth minimum six figures a quarter for them, that one single tool, um, and more. So go, you can go to activate, activate dot breakthrough 3x.com activate dot breakthrough 3x.com and you get that small business toolkit for free and then you know as a follower of neil's and being a part of this show if you have any questions whatsoever please just reach out at our email which you'll see in our our follow-up help at breakthrough 3x.com hit me up let me know uh you know we run a boutique business and have a lot of fun helping clients so if we can help solve some of your challenges growing your business we'd love to absolutely yeah. and if you guys want to get connected through me too and get a personal relationship with dan you know how to connect with me please do in the show notes will be those links as well for anybody who wants to get on and of course you can check out his social media and stuff and i encourage you if you're looking for leads if you got an offer if you're coaching if you're just running ecom or you want to potentially have someone help you uh, on a performance basis with your marketing i can recommend dan extremely highly and I appreciate you so much coming on today and sharing some wisdom, some knowledge, and having some fun with me, Dan. Thanks so much. Yeah, Neil, pleasure. Thank you, man. If you like this episode, please share it with people you think will enjoy it as well. Thank you for listening. And be sure to tune in next week for a brand new episode of High Voltage Business Builders. 